Hi friends, welcome to Sailing Liberty. We're really glad you're back. We often love to take walks, to feel the breeze and clear our mind. You know, they say, move your feet and move your mind. We walk away from the boat and we come back with solutions. That we agree upon. Yeah, <laughs> and we go back to the boat and do them. So let's go back to the boat and do them. Today on Sailing Liberty. As I was going over the Cork and Kerry mountains, I met with Captain Farrell and his money he was counting. I first produced my pistol and then produced my rapier. Stand and deliver, for you are a bold deceiver. I said, Ooh, Ram and do Ram and da. Wait for the daddy o. Wait for the daddy o. There's whiskey in the jar. It's pretty crazy when you get UPS deliveries on your dock, and we got the Geek Pure Reverse Osmosis Water Purifier and that was the best price and then we're gonna finalize our water system and when we do the island hopping you can't always buy one gallon jugs of water so we have to have some clean water to drink this system gonna filter the water between the water tank and the glass because we don't know how fresh the water stays in the water tank Yeah, we read the comments. Ali Nonderdonk, 7577. Not you other Nonderdonks out there. Forget about it. This is for Ali Nonderdonk, 7577. And say thank you. This was the best idea we've had all week. Instead of spreading out our chain while we're painting it and wasting all this overspray, the overspray goes in the next chain over. So we're doing it like this from now on. Looks like it's gonna take about three positions to get the paint on all the chain. Line up my dots. Let's do it. When you find yourself spray painting chain, you know that you're pretty much ready to shove off and you're just getting the last little details. Or you're just avoiding the real work, <laughs> getting down to the tough projects. Now it's time to get to work. This is the secondary water filtration system. It takes our tank water and filters it into delicious drinking water, which will only come from a tap like this. So basically it's a three-step pre-filter you got for particles, you got some uh, carbon filter to take out the chemicals, and then it, we have a booster pump, and then we go through the RO filter, reverse osmosis. And then it goes through one more filter for flavor and into the tank. The tank pressurizes it and feeds it to the faucet. I, there's like about a hundred of these on Amazon, so I read them, and I read them, and I spent a week reading about it. And this was like the best one because it had all the good specs, it had standard filters, a very nice faucet, and it came with spares. Geek Pure Reverse Osmosis Water System. You mean Geek Pure? And I mean Geek Pure. Spelled like <laughs> Geek, but we say Geek Pure because it doesn't sound like Geek. This is the one I selected after a lot of research. I'll put the link below so you can select it without any research. Uh, thank you very much. Back to the boat. It's like almost soil, like it's uh, not any more wood. How do you call it? Dirt. Ah! Oh, sorry, I bumped the little handle. All right, the big chunks are out, and now it's just the dirt and the crumbs. Maybe a couple of uh, specks of particles in there as well. Breaking it out. Or else it's gonna turn into the Roach Motel. Look at that piece. Yeah. This is the worst compartment on the ship by far. Okay, I, I see one more lining there up. I don't know if I can reach it, my butt gets stuck. <laughs> I 
I think it's like some kind of mold or something. It makes me cough. Irritates the throat. Yeah. <laughs> Coming out? No. Oh my god, look. Look at this right here. Look at this what? writing on this frame. There's writing in Chinese. Where? Right above your head. Huh? Inside, on the inside of the frame. Oh my god, there is. Scrappy wood coming up there. Nice. Bless it. 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 Wine definitely helps. <laughs> definitely. Under oh, the yeah. sink. Classic rotten wood under the sink. Houses have it, boats have it. Clean it up, dry it out. The bulkheads look good. Tabbing solid. Now we're gonna take the bolts off, grind them off, make this smooth. Dad, why we have crayons in our tea nuts? We're hoping that they're gonna mark our sink for drilling. So you wanna wiggle it a little bit? Yeah. Do you see the marks? But the thing about these crayon marks is they're very precise. They're like spot on. And it has to be, right? Because it's it's all metal. And those tea nuts are glued in. It has to be right. Now I'm gonna hit it with the center punch, and then that'll keep the drill bit from wandering around. See the little dent. Was it your dad's? That's my dad's center punch there. Old school. Get a little discoloration from the grinder. So this is the gasket for the sink. Ooh. Neoprene and stainless washer, 316 round head bolts. Oh yeah. Also T nuts for them to go into. All for McMaster Car, special order. And it's worth it because you gotta do it right and it looks shippy. This used to be marine adhesive on here. Now we have a nice gasket and some really great hardware. We can have it easy on, easy off. Get in there, get it done. Because otherwise it's a nightmare in there. And at least with this off, you feel like you got some breathing room and your head isn't bumping into the drain pipe. And you know what? On a ship that's important because there's a lot of valuable equipment under the kitchen sink up in this boat. And you never know when you're gonna have an emergency or you're gonna to wanna to do some upgrading. And we do a lot of both. So here we go. Tighten it up. Last screw. And now we are opening up the sink to put the new faucet we found somewhere. Yeah, that somebody was remodeling and they just chucked the sink and the faucet and everything. It's a great faucet. It works great, no leaks. Faucet's coming off really easy, which is nice. Ah, you gotta love it when your sink just pops out like a champ. <laughs> Highly recommend it. Ah, it's more water. Just like at home. It's a regular old kitchen sink with a kitchen faucet. Oh, it's off. It's out, just like that little kid. We're making progress. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cheesy too. Hell yeah. You can see the structure. Oh, a lot of moisture has been going into that shelf back there in this cabinet. Oh. The whole bottom of the cabinet's pretty cheese burger. see? Oh no. We've got a Delta faucet from somebody's remodel job and it's tested and it works and uh -oh. rah, 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 these don't fit. Well, it's not the finest cabinet making. Well, it's uh, well, it's not even cabinet making. It's just grinding a hole. Get back in. Fits like a glove. All right, how we go with our new unit? Hmm. Mm hmm. All right, get this suit back in, and we're gonna try this out. Gonna power up. And the moment of truth. Woo! Couldn't be easier. Another little job is not even on the list. Yeah. <laughs> Took half the day. Mm. A little dinner coming along. What? Yeah, yeah homemade that's right. tomato sauce.
Whenever you design something, you need to know if you're looking at a tensile load, a shear load, or a compression load because every load has a different treatment. This is the shelf. The bottom side of the bracket has got a tensile load, basically pulling up, lengthening, and that has to be bolted because a thread through wood, there's nothing on a tensile load. This side is gonna go into the bulkhead, and the load on this is a shear load. So the real load is on the hardware itself, shearing the hardware. A screw will be just fine on the side of this bulkhead. And you put that bracket because... This bracket is going to carry the weight of the water in both of those tanks. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. Wow, look at that baby. And we are rock solid. Tanks go on and we can start making our connections and getting this water system put together. We're going to have fresh drinking water right out of our tank, no matter where it comes from. This is probably 30 cents for that screw. They're the worst. And the real fun part is, I've actually learned how to crawl into this little space all by myself. With this shelf in here, I can actually get in here. So I found my worst ratchet strap, and uh, now it's gonna be down here holding these tanks in for the, the rest of the foreseeable future. Seems pretty good. Um, sweetie, can you hand me the blue tank? Yeah. Here. Oh. This thickness shows you the isolation. Why you have the isolation there? Well, they have rubber feet already on it, but I'd like to have even more isolation so that we don't get any unnecessary noise transmitted into the bulkhead so we have to hear the pump running as much. Just quiet it down a little bit, I think it's worth the trouble. We got locking nuts, regular washers, we got fender washers. By going like this. We got our backing layer. Fender washers. Now we got complete isolation of this motor from the bulkhead. Hopefully we'll get a little quieter performance something we could enjoy every day. Better is better. How about them apples? If I get a three to 5% improvement, that's an improvement. And when you're getting good, three to 5% is pretty hard to come by. I'll take it any day. Oh. All right, now that is some good physical isolation. You know, while I'm in here suffering. Okay, so this, I am making homemade tomato sauce with bell peppers, garlic, and some potato grated, and medium rare steak. Super delicious, Mexican style. Where should we put this? Now we're cutting. The oh, faucet yeah. hole. Okay, just like that. Well, I knew this hole was gonna be really tight. You have to wiggle it in maybe. I'd rather have it tight than loose. Like a good tight fit. What you see, my friends, are all the faucets are different kind of design. Manual system, it's got its own tubing. Yeah. Seawater system, it's got its own Pressure vessel and pump. Main house system. Obviously vessel and pump. This is point of use RO system. It has an auxiliary pump and its own filtration system. So it's like some weird exhibition of all the different faucets there. Yeah, it's like uh, <laughs> technology through the ages. <laughs> okay, the first test didn't go so well. well if a mistake can happen, it's gonna happen. At least we put the pan down so we catch everything. Yeah, I forgot to put the hose clamp on. 
I was focused on the new valve and I forgot that. It can happen even in best families, Dad. Eventually everything will happen. So that's the only leak? Well, I don't know. I haven't opened the valve yet. Oh. All right. It's tight quarters under here, but we're just in the home stretch about to put the unit up on the bulkhead. That's one screw. I can have the sink back in tonight and we could catch up on dishes. Get out the ice pick. I don't know really say we didn't do the least we could do. <laughs> it's under. Our first half of the water system is finally ready. And we did uh, three cycles to clean all the filters. And now I'm gonna taste it. Yeah, it works. When you have a rainwater, hose water, desalinization water, you can always have a clean water with that system. You never have to worry about your tank. The second reason why we did it was the cost of the bottled water and inconvenience. So now we are much more prepared to sail around with a self-sufficient system. Good order. And now we're gonna meet Steve. Gonna go on the water and he's gonna teach me, hopefully, how to catch fish. Chuggy Tuggy upgraded to a massive boat. So we've got it on the four wheel drive, big ass truck. We're gonna put it in the water. What do you think, Paisano? You got a lot of these kind of boats here in the marina? No, but I love that. That is a unique, I don't even know what you call it, like a pilot house, ocean voyager boat. Office, you said it was like an officer's launch, right? Yeah, it looks like yeah, it looks like a captain's gig on a navy boat, especially with the gray. Captain's gig. Captain's gig. Neato. Yep. What, the hell? what do you think, Brian? Is it gonna float? Oh man, she's gonna get down, man. Nice. She's gonna get back. We love your boat, Steve. <laughs> I'm, pr I'm pretty proud of her. <laughs> Where did you find a boat like this? Uh, I talked to the manufacturer, and he's the one that told me that. Uh, guy who had the very first one was thinking about selling it. Really? Because he was going to do the Great Loop and a whole bunch of stuff, and then they ended up buying a beach house, and they didn't see it anymore. Gotcha. <laughs> Steve, what's the name of your ship? We hadn't officially picked yet, but Matt came up with the uh, Honky Conk. Now that's good horse sense. Milk. Oh, that's a bow thruster. Nice. Well, ship shape shape, they say, and everything's ready to go ashore. I think I might have a hangover. But you know what? I got up while I was still pretty buzzed, and I'm feeling good. <laughs> Doctors recommend starting your hangover early. Don't dwell on it in bed. It'll only make you grumpy. <laughs> yeah, everyone's been talking about you coming like this for the past week, you guys. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Cast off forward. <laughs> Today we go out with Steve to learn how to spare fish. When Steve asks us if we want to spend a day on the water with his buddies on his new Steve Piper, what are we gonna say? The answer is always yes. And then when he sweetened the pot and said he's gonna teach Helen how to spear fish, we're right on board. Hey, when you're out around the islands, and you got rice and oils and all those necessities, the last thing you gotta have is your proteins. And fishing is the way to go. But Steve says spear fishing, fish hunting, is a sure thing. You drop a hook in the water, you might wait all day. You take a swim, you find a fish, you bring home supper. And that's what Helen's gonna learn how to do today. And you know what? At least we're gonna have a beautiful day on the water and we could use a break, because it's not all work. You gotta have a little play. You don't wanna become a dull boy, do you? And you don't wanna become a dull girl. Not that Helen ever could. So we said yes, and we're so glad we did because we're smiling and happy. Pop's making sandwiches for everybody, and it's time to get our energy going because it's about to get wet. 
Slam jam with E. Slam jam with E. Good. What is it, Helen? It's a bologna sandwich. It's a trawler cruiser. A trawler cruiser. Oh, what yeah. a nice boat. It's fantastic. <laughs> Butter, huh? Wouldn't have it any other way, yeah. And what's Helen gonna learn today, would you say? Helen is gonna learn to snorkel. <laughs> With a wetsuit. <laughs> Swam in. I remember yeah. that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, neutral. Steve has set up right with all chain road and a great anchor. Putting out plenty of scope and we're going to be set up good. The guys can just hang out and enjoy. Helen is undaunted by the conditions and it says she's still getting in the water no matter what it takes and how rough it gets. And you know what? You got to give her applause for that. So this goes in the front, right? Yep. Okay. You ain't going out right. <laughs> That's actually a chest pad to cock your spear gun. Oh yeah? Are you nervous? Steve, are you nervous? No, I'm not nervous. No, I'm are you, Helen? Are you nervous? I'm worried about you. No, I'm not nervous. She won't quit because this is her first and best chance to learn what she's doing. Because when we're out there in the wild, it's going to get rough. And you don't always have the perfect vacation weather that you might dream of. In a short motorboat ride over to the fishing ground, they've always yeah, been lucky for him. Okay, let's do this. So. Like that? Yeah. You hunt and you hold. Yeah. And whenever you see a fish. Okay. But use your left hand to, that's going to be your guidance. That's going to what you're going to hold rocks with. Your left okay. hand is everything. So okay. you pull it back to cock it. Yeah. And then. I hold it you here. Hold it until you see a fish. And okay. then you let it go. Ow, it hurts my uh, it right hand. Up. Up, thanks. Just don't bump your head. You need to be in the habit. Hey, when you're diving, okay. you're not looking down, you're looking in front. Okay. Steve warned us the chop is a little rough, so it's not going to be a really great first lesson, but Helen says let's do it. It doesn't look like there's a lot of fish coming up on Helen's spear. I don't see any fish. No, they're, they're in a little bit deeper water. Okay. Rough conditions for your first lesson, but you're hanging in there, kid. I like your chutzpah. Way to go, Steve. We can always count on you to bring home the bacon. Still small chicken. Hallelujah, she made it home safe to the boat, and that's the number one thing. I'm glad she made it safe, and she's fearless, and she's having fun. Good job, Helen. You're one of a kind. First impressions? The trap is heavy. I didn't catch any fish. These gloves are wrong because... Uh, too slippery? Too slippery. Also, the spear is heavy, so when it slips, it starts to dip, but also you need the stronger muscles. Beat up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got cuts all over your hands. Bounce all off. Of yeah. You have cuts? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I got my first lesson with the spare sling, and it wasn't that bad. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, the water was pretty choppy. It's calmed down a little bit now from what it was when we were in there. We're actually going up in tide, I think, right now. Which okay. is good. Yeah. Uh, That's why we waited 30 minutes. How do you know the rising <laughs> tide? Well, just got a rope caught in the prop, and uh, our hero, Captain Steve, went down and cut it apart, and we are now on our way back to the marina. Or sunset. <laughs> Come on.
Thanks, Captain Steve, for teaching me how to fish. Well, hopefully next time you'll catch one. <laughs> well, I'm gonna bet it's gonna be delicious. Mm. Now we are one step closer to have fun times on the sea, and fun times it's gonna be. Hey, and time is running out. But there's no time like the present, so we're gonna see you guys next time <laughs> on, on Sailing, Sailing Liberty. Liberty. <laughs> <laughs> <Bet>. <laughs>